What up guys, I'm Benny here and in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to snowboard. We're going from never ever snowboarding to linking some turns. So, let's get started. So attached to this video down in the description below, I do have a complete guide, a stepping stone for levels one all the way through nine. That includes like crazy turns and basic turns. Everything from riding switch to just learning how to strap in. So if you're looking for that guide, go ahead and click the link in the description down below. Download that and you can literally pop it on your phone, go snowboard and figure out what you can work on next. That's the power of the download. So go ahead and check that out. Hey guys, so the first thing that we're gonna be talking about is just our board, simply. So we do have a snowboard. Our snowboard consists of a nose and it consists of a tail. It consists of a top sheet, which is gonna be your cool graphic on top, and then it has a base. Now within our base, we have an edge and an edge. But then on our board, we have bindings. So these are essentially what is gonna strap our feet in to the board. Now, as we'll talk about this here in a second, how to actually strap in, but when it comes to our snowboard, we do have a toe side edge, we're gonna learn more in a second, and a heel side edge. So throughout this video, you're gonna hear me talking about a heel side edge, heel side stop, heel side turn, and that means that primarily the work is gonna be based on that heel edge. And then we're also gonna do the same thing for our toe side edge. Moving on from there, we do have our bindings. So essentially our bindings consist of a toe strap. This is gonna go around our toe. We also have a heel strap that's gonna go around our heel. And then we have this thing called a high back. Uh, essentially the high back is where the back of our boot uh, is gonna sit. And this allows us to pressure this and it's gonna help our board do some cool performance. So that is our snowboard. Now, of course, before we ever actually go snowboarding, we got to determine which way is our dominant direction. When you snowboard, you travel a lot that way or that way. Skiing, you travel forward and backwards, and obviously you can do turns, but snowboarding is oriented more going left or right. So the first thing that you got to do before you even strap in is you got to determine, hey, Am I a regular footer or a goofy footer? A regular footer is a terminology indicating that your left foot is your dominant direction. So if I were to run and slide across an ice rink, regular footer means my left foot would be leading the way. So that's regular. Now the opposite to that is if I'm running down an ice rink and I slide and I naturally go with my right foot forward, that is gonna be called goofy. So my right foot is leading the direction. So there's a couple different ways that you can determine whether you're regular or goofy. One is run and slide. So we're gonna do that right now. I got a special announcement, and if you guys have been seeing this logo, this is my Benetech logo. I'm dropping merch, is literally live right now. You guys can go pick up the merch. It is part of the goggle company that I'm starting, and then eventually it's gonna be an outdoor tech company, whereas I build this brand starting from nothing and making it into something and providing you guys an elevated experience along the way. So if you guys want a hoodie, if you wanna support a Colorado company, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. And then if you get one of these hoodies, tag me on Instagram, cause who knows, maybe we do a hoodie, sticker, merch, shout out on the gram. All right guys, let's get back to the show. So with that said, now we know which one's regular and which one's goofy. So what I want you to do, whether this is in your living room, you're at an ice rink, or you're out on the snow, what I want you to do is take a couple steps and then jump sideways. Now, whichever way is natural is the best indication of which direction you, you're, you wanna go. Now, you may find out that you naturally go this way, but it may be easy to go the other way. There is gonna be a point in your snowboarding you, where you gotta figure out which one's more comfortable and then stay there and, and then work on that. Ideally, down the road, the sooner you can work on the left foot forward and the right foot forward is awesome, but for now, we're gonna stick to one foot. Now, it's not a bad idea to try both directions just to see which one's more intuitive. I'm gonna go the other way. For me, I really feel the natural tendency for me is to go on my left foot forward. Before performing any of these tasks, my suggestion is to find an area that is super flat. Essentially, we have this thing that's called a fall line. 
If I had a bowling ball and I want to roll it, where does the bowling ball go? That's the fall line or the gravity line. So if I have a nice flat area, I don't have to worry about sliding down somewhere where I don't want to slow down because I'm new to snowboarding. I literally have no idea what to do. Then that's a situation you are trying to avoid as this new, new snowboarder. So what we have chose here is a nice slick area. So the next step is really identifying how the heck do we strap in? Now there's some products out there that you don't have straps, but for now we're gonna discuss the straps. Essentially what you do is you take this, you imagine that this is a snake and he's got his food and you're going to feed it in and then you're going to push down. Now once you hear the little clicking sound, then you're gonna to wanna to ratchet it down. You want these to be really tight so that your feet don't move around. Now on this specific binding and most bindings, what you can do is you can take your thumb or your hand and you pop the binding out just like that. So let's go ahead and strap in for the first time ever. Same thing, we, we have already identified that I am a regular rider. I'm gonna put my foot in. Now as I put my foot into the board, you're gonna notice that most of my weight is gonna be on my back foot. There's less weight on my lead foot because I wanna be able to balance. As I balance, I'm keeping most of my weight on my right foot. As I get into the binding, I wanna slowly add weight so I can now maintain my balance. If I have all of my weight, in that binding right from the get-go, your board is really slick, you have a chance of slipping out. So just test the market a little bit, test the waters. So as we do this, we are going to strap this binding in here and we're going to ratchet that. Notice that my toe strap is over my toe. I'm gonna take this back strap and I'm gonna do the same thing. Hear the click and I'm gonna ratchet. One, two, three, as tight as I can get them so that they're nice and comfortable. Now from there, I want to stand up. Now, with the first time I ever stand up on a snowboard, again, it's going to be super slick. So you just want to really manage that and stand up slowly so you can control that. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be in nice and control. Now, earlier we talked about, hey, we have this tip and tail and we have the nose and heel. Now it's going to make more sense. So as I stand here, I want to become familiar with both my toe side edge and my heel side edge and start to understand how my board moves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my free foot and I'm gonna step behind the board, behind the binding. I'm gonna have my foot just between the bindings and I'm gonna keep my weight distributed evenly between both feet so I can stay nice and balanced. After that, what I wanna do is I wanna lift up my lead foot lead foot, meaning whatever foot is strapped in, I'm gonna lift up my toes to the top of my boots and I'm gonna tilt my board. I should feel that my board is now on an edge. I wanna move my board left and right, allowing me to feel the board slicing in the snow. And then you can also lift up your toes as high as you can on that lead binding and try to move the board sideways. You're gonna notice that it's pretty locked into place. It's really hard to do. I want then next, I want to push my toes more flat so that it's more even with the ground. And I want to try to do the same thing. I'm going to slide. I'm going to notice that most of the board is sliding on the snow. You're also going to notice as I try to pivot, my board actually moves left and right. So what that's teaching you is the higher your board is, the more friction you're creating. The lower it is, the less friction you create. So now we've done that with our heel side edge. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our back foot and we're going to slowly take a step to the front of our board which is going to be on our toe side edge this is also a very tricky moment where you might slip out so be very cautious and take a nice smooth step forward from there you're going to take your knee and you're going to push it over your toe what that's going to do is it's going to tilt your board onto your toes allowing you to do the same thing that we just did now we're going to slide our board side to side see how that feels we're going to try to turn it we're going to notice that our board does not turn when we have a high tilt after that, we're gonna bring our board back down and we're gonna let it kind of slide a little bit and notice how slick our board is. All right, so after this part of the video is when we're gonna start moving and grooving and start actually sliding around. So I'm gonna put my nice helmet on just so that we're safe and ready to send it. So the next part is we're now gonna start to become mobile. I need to be able to figure out how am I gonna go from point A to point B. Now, with that said, we're gonna use this technique called skating. When we're skating, essentially what you're doing is you're putting about 65% of your weight on your lead foot. So you wanna have your hip shifted over your lead foot and your lead ankle and knee bent so you have some play in it, some nice agility. And we're gonna take our back foot and that's gonna go behind 
are bored. Take small steps. Now the goal is to be able to find a place that's about 10, even 15 feet away, and you're gonna take small steps by taking your back foot, and you're gonna push only about a foot. As I'm starting to make those pushes, I wanna keep my lead shoulder, my lead hip, and my board all pointed in the same direction. What you're gonna find as you start doing this in real life is that your lead shoulder wants to open up and your hips going over there and now we're starting to contradict where we're going. And essentially, it's like when you're driving a car and your tires are turning this way, but your steel, steering wheel is turning that way. It, it, it's kind of confusing and your car doesn't know what to do. So what you wanna do is align everything up so that when I wanna go left here in a little bit, that everything's pointed left with my shoulder, my hip, and my board. If I wanna go right, same thing, whether it's over your toes or your heel. From here, we're gonna skate out about 10 steps. Now, the first time you do this, you're gonna find your board is very slick, very wobbly, very a little out of control. So take small progressive steps and get used to it. Eventually, you wanna take a bigger step and a bigger step, but not so far where your back foot is going past your back binding, but just little steps. And as you take those little steps, stay in control. So what you saw right there is when you have your back foot on your toe side edge, and essentially it just makes everything really hard because you're turning your steering wheel and your wheels in totally different directions, it makes things really hard. So I highly recommend keeping your back foot or your free foot on your heel side edge, it's gonna keep everything in alignment a lot easier. There are some situations we'll get into a little bit with where we wanna move our back foot to that place, but when we're skating, highly recommend doing that. Now, after you've gotten a couple steps, you're feeling good, I want you to try to take a couple steps and then glide. What that means, you're gonna take three steps, accumulate a little bit of momentum, you're gonna take your back foot and you're gonna put it between, you're gonna put it against your back binding so you like have a nice platform. And then you should be able to slide a foot, maybe two, maybe three, depending how hard you push. And then you're gonna keep your knees bent in an athletic position and enjoy the ride. The more I press my free foot against the back of my, my binding, the more stable I'm gonna feel. Now, as my back foot is against the binding, notice that I try to get my balance between both of my feet. So when I'm skating, 60% of my weight's on my front foot. As I'm just hanging out, then I'm evening the weight just a little bit more. Now you've glided, you've slided, you've had a good time, but then you realize that I can only go so far. Now I'm gonna have to turn around at some point. The next little fun activity we have is to turn around, right? So ideally I'd love for you to be able to go both directions, which is gonna be clockwise, counterclockwise, also known as front side and back side. And we'll get that to that kind of nerdy stuff here in a little bit, but the goal is to be able to go left, Go right, go front side, back side, clockwise, counterclockwise, however you want to say it. Now for me being a regular rider and I want to make a, a clockwise turn, I want to be able to get my back foot over my toe side edge. And then I'm going to lift up my board and I'm just going to scoot and use the back of my heel to get my board to kind of hit against my back of my heel and pivot the snowboard. And I want to get my snowboard to do a whole 180 degrees. And then guess what? I can go practice the glide and slide where I get push, 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 slide. I can go do that. And then guess what? I'm gonna turn around in the opposite direction and go the other way. So I'm gonna take my back foot and put it on my heel side edge. And now there's a couple different tactics we can do here. I can take my foot and I can turn my toes and get my board to slide. But remember what we learned earlier. If I want my board to slide like that, I want the edges to be a little bit lower or less tilt. So I can get my board to slide. Another option you have is to put about 85 to 90% of your weight on your free foot you can take your edge of your board and lean it against your boot and then turn your hip and it will get the board to turn a 180. So there, you're gonna start to really be challenged because if your weight distribution is off, if you're leaning too far to your tail, too far to your nose, too far forward, too far back, it's gonna be really tricky. So you're really trying to control your snowboard at this point by keeping your eyes up, your spine up, and then navigating the board. But this can be really challenging just because it's so foreign to us, but just, have some fun with it, you know, start to move around. Don't get frustrated. Just remember, it's beautiful out. We're having a good day. So the next step we're gonna get into is finding a nice little mellow hill that has some transition, that, and then after that, it either flattens out or slightly gets uphill. It's kind of like a catcher's mitt. So if I start going fast, either I lose all my speed and momentum, or that I can go uphill and I'll lose my speed and my momentum. So I really need to find a place that has a little bit of a slope, but nothing crazy. One good indication of finding a good place is you're gonna see a lot of instructors and a lot of other people learning how to do it. It's also probably a nice little cheat code. It's cause uh, they're doing the same thing you are. You can go hang out with them. I mean, not stealing their ideas, but 
using the terrain that's right next to them. Now is to utilize that hill to point our board downhill and then we're gonna learn how to stop. One of the biggest things about snowboarding is going fast and stopping. That's literally what snowboarding is. Go faster, turn, and stop. So this is going to be part of that. So just to reiterate, we are going to make sure that we have this area is clear, there's nobody there, and now we have a nice little slope. You might be asking, okay, cool, I got a nice slope. But before we go down the slope, we gotta be able to go up the slope. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to climb up a hill safely. And this also talks about using tilt. So this is a really cool little exercise we're about to hop into. So when you're climbing up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your board across the fall line. Now remember what a fall line is, is where a bowling ball would roll down the hill. You want your board to be a perpendicular to that, so you're making a T. This is the fall line, this is your snowboard. Now if your board starts to tilt sideways, your board's gonna wanna run away from you, and if you are, if it is running away, that is why. So you want your board to be nice and straight against the fall line. You're gonna take your back foot and you're gonna put it on your toe side edge while the front side of your body is pointed up the hill. With our free foot, we're gonna take a medium to large step, and then we're gonna take our back foot and just try to climb up exactly to where our other foot is. With that said, the higher tilt you have, meaning that I am able to push my knee more over my toe, it's gonna to create a larger tilt. I'm gonna have a stronger base to climb from. If my board is really flat, it's gonna to wanna to slide. Remember that from earlier, it's gonna to wanna to slide. So if I wanna grip and rip, I wanna tilt that board up and I'm pushing my knee over my toe to allow that to happen. Once you're done climbing up, what you can do is take our back foot, put it on our heel side edge. Next, we're gonna turn our shoulder and our hip and point it down the hill while my foot is still in the snow. Now I'm gonna bend both of my knees. I'm gonna put a little extra weight on my lead foot. And when I'm ready, I'm going to put my back foot against the back binding, and then I'm gonna allow my momentum to carry me out. I want about 55 to 60% of my weight on my lead foot. What that's gonna do is allow me to be in a strong position, and it's gonna allow me to go down the hill. The other thing with that said is you want to make sure that your shoulder, hip, and knee, and board are all facing the same direction and going in the same direction. So everything is nice and stacked. If you just think about a classic athletic position where your shoulders, hips, and knees are stacked, well in this position in snowboarding, that's really ideal. The biggest difference is I'm just turning my head, right? But in these examples that you just saw that are not so awesome, essentially I had 85% of my weight in my back foot because I was scared and so that doesn't work. Notice how I fell down to my back, it wasn't awesome, right? So I wanna trust this position. Also with that said, uh, if I have my shoulder too far open, I'm gonna spin out and that's also not what I'm looking for. I really wanna stay in that athletic weightlifting position while only turning my head. So as you notice, what I did there is I was able to go straight and I didn't stop until the terrain allowed me to stop. I did not dictate where I was stopping, what I was doing. So that's the next step. We're gonna go hike back up and we're gonna point our board down the fall line. We're gonna keep 60% of our weight on our lead foot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our knees bent and we're gonna pretend our lead knee is a door and we're gonna start to move our knee and rotate our knee. In addition, you don't have to, but it is an option. If you wanna lift up your lead foot, lift up all of your five toes on your lead foot and that's gonna cause the board to do a little bit of a pivot. Now, that's we're essentially trying to go from straight down the hill to turn 90 degrees across the hill. As we start to get our board to start going sideways and we start getting to 85, 80 degrees, then we wanna lift up all 10 of our toes so that we can create that tilt and we can stop. Now, the first time you do this, it might be super sporadic where you put a lot of edge on. Next time you not, not, might not put enough, but the goal is to progressively move and control our stop. We don't wanna stop aggressively, we wanna stop progressively. What I mean by that is, imagine we're going into a stop sign and you got a passenger without a seatbelt and you just slam on the brakes, where's that dude going? Boom, to the windshield. But if we progressively stop at the stop sign, not a big deal, right? So let's go do that. Now the next challenge is we did a heel side because we were on our heels, that's why it's called heel side. Now, what if we do it on our toe side? So earlier I was, in, I was talking about pressing my knee uh, over my toe, allowing my board to tilt. So now we're gonna use the same exact tactic as we talked about before to do a toe side turn. Now this can be a little bit more scary because you're facing uphill. My momentum is going that way. I'm facing that way, it can be a little scary, but this is really good practice because down the road, 
You're gonna need a toe side turn, you're gonna need a heel side turn, and it's essentially driving your car and being able to go left and right. Imagine if you could only go right, how inefficient would that be? Eh, you'd probably get some places, but it wouldn't be awesome. As you can see there, there can be a little bit more challenging, especially as you look back uphill. It's a little bit challenging to control, but it's a really good practice for you. So what we just did there is called a J turn. So if you can imagine what a J is, is it goes straight and then turns, right? So essentially that's what we are doing with those turns, both on our heel side and toe side. Now, once you're comfortable going down and actually stopping without falling over, it's time to move on and strap both of our feet on. So we're actually gonna go skate, migrate to a different area that allows us to go practice a little bit more and ride a magic carpet. So that's gonna be next. Once you're feeling pretty awesome with both of those turns, being able to go down, stop on your heel side and toe side, it's time to migrate to the magic carpet area as well as strap in both feet. So let's do that now. I like to clear all the snow out because there's a lot of snow in there and this is my boy Sean. He's helping film. Thanks dog. One of the most challenging parts about learning snowboarding for the first time is literally standing up. So I'm gonna do my best to give you a couple different tactics to stand up and uh, some alternative methods that uh, could help as well. So here we go. That is one tactic to be able to get up is essentially you're trying to get your tailbone as close to the bottom of your board as possible. You can take your lead hand and reach for the toe edge and you're pushing off of your back foot, allowing your body to get up just a little bit and then you wanna stand straight up. But as you stand straight up, this is the first time you've actually like stood up you wanna make sure that the area is clear and that you have the ability to balance. So you wanna keep weight on both feet at the same time and you wanna keep your toes up. Essentially, you wanna have a, a, a slight tilt in your board so that you have a little bit of control. If you're struggling with that first method, another tactic to stand up is to sit back down on your bum. Essentially, you're trying to roll over to your toe side edge. Now you do that by taking one knee and bringing it up and across your body opposite shoulder so that you do a little hot dog roll and you roll and then you're gonna be able to put your toe edge on the ground, you're gonna be able to stand up. Now, this may be a little bit challenging because it's really easy to get on your toe side edge and actually stand up. You may have some challenges turning around, getting to go downhill. So it's gonna be a little bit of an experiment for you, but ideally you're gonna be able to stand up, slide sideways and control your board. And both, you wanna be able to do a side slip which is sliding down the hill. We're gonna get into that next, both on your toes and your heels. So you may end up doing your toes first, which is not a bad thing. You can do toes or heels. So either of them work as long as you stand up and slide. Once you stand up, we're not just gonna stand here all day. We gotta do something with our lives. So what we're we gonna do is we're gonna start doing a thing called a side slip. We're gonna go down the fall line where our board stays across the fall line, but our momentum is gonna go down the hill now there's one rule in snowboarding that no matter what, you always gotta follow. It's not even a rule, we're gonna call it a law. Anytime you are sliding sideways, again, across the fall line, you wanna make sure you're leaning uphill. Now this is very important for you to understand now because it's gonna save you for the rest of your snowboard career. As I'm leaning uphill, it allows my toe edge to stay up. If I lean downhill, I'm gonna do a thing called catching an edge and I'll show you an example of why it's not awesome. Oh, don't do that. Right, that looks pretty aggressive, it looks pretty vicious. You wanna keep that edge up so we don't slam on the ground. So that's gonna be the very most important takeaway for today. And we're gonna manage our speed. Essentially what we wanna do is we wanna pressure the back of our high backs and we can do that by slightly leaning back as if you're kind of, you're sitting in a chair, that's a really good position to be in. The other thing is you wanna lift up your toes. The more you lean back, the more you lift up your toes, the quicker you're gonna stop. So you're gonna create more tilt. If I go too quick, it's gonna be very abrupt, it's gonna be hard to control, so I wanna progressively do that. Now some people tend to lift up their toes and push them down and doing this movement. Well, you're gonna catch an edge and we already know that that's not fun. So you wanna progressively do that. But at all times when we're on our heel side side slip, we're constantly having pressure and ideally we have our edge at, at about a t minimum of 10 degree edge angle so they don't catch those toes. If we're going below 10 degrees, you are, yep, you, yep, you're thinking about it. Catching an edge, not six. So keep those toes up. No, it's just gonna be just like this. As long as you have that downhill edge up, you're gonna be just fine. Now the same thing applies. If 
I'm on my toe side edge, meaning my front side of my body is facing uphill and all of my weights on my toes while I lean uphill, I'm going to be fine as long as I'm leaning uphill. As soon as I lean downhill on the wrong edge, it's not going to be awesome. So what you saw there is I was able to keep my weight distributed between both of my feet. If I'm leaning too much on one foot, my board is going to pivot downhill and I'm going to start to go fast. Now there's a time where we want to do that, but only if you can stop, slow down and control it. So for now, what I want you to do is lift up all 10 toes at the same time, apply equal pressure to the high backs so that you can smoothly go in a very straight corridor. That's the goal. So as we're doing our heel side slip and we're going down a corridor, what I want you to do is go down for like three seconds and then stop in control. So you're gonna count one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, then progressively stop at that stop sign. And then when you're really feeling comfortable with that, you're gonna go to a five count. One, 1,000, two, three, four, five, stop. The more I count, the faster I'm gonna go or the more I'm side slipping. The goal is to be able to stop when you want and you dictate where you stop. So that if there's a small child crossing the road, you know how to stop. So that's the goal. So that's gonna be your task before you move on to the falling leaf. And we're gonna now start to change direction. So my goal is to actually lean a little bit more on my right foot, a little bit more on my left foot, and actually start to change directions. What that means is we're gonna do a falling leaf. Imagine a leaf that falls down, kind of goes sideways, sideways, sideways. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna slightly go to the right, and then we're gonna come back to neutral, slightly go to the left, come back neutral, go to the right, go to the left, come back neutral. And the whole time is we're managing our speed. It's more important to go slow and manage your speed than get out of control because you're most likely not to be able to get that control back. So let's go do a falling leaf. So as I do in this falling leaf, it's kind of hard to really see what I'm doing. So I'm actually going to use my hands a lot. So if you see me lifting up my hands equally at the same time, it means I'm lifting up all of my toes to the top of my boot equally. You might see me tap my hip or my shoulder. That means that I'm shifting my weight towards that hip or that shoulder. So as you watch this demonstration right here, it, it's gonna make more sense. So one cool thing about the falling leaf, as I start to change directions, I'm putting weight on that foot, but guess what? I get to look where I'm going, so I get to see where everyone's at. And then I can come back to neutral and then look where I'm going and put weight on that lead, that foot to be able to go in that direction. I go now do that in the opposite direction, which really means our toe side edge. This is a toe side falling leap. Essentially what that means is the front side of my body is going to be facing uphill. Now instead of lifting up my toes, I want to actually press my knees against the front of my boots, causing pressure on the toes of my boot or on the tongues of my boot, and then that's gonna tilt my board. The same rules apply. I gotta keep my board at minimum 10 degrees so I don't catch that edge, cause it's not fun. And I wanna keep my center of mass facing uphill. Now to start with, I'm gonna keep the weight distributed evenly between both of my feet, and I want the pressure to be even on my shins. I don't wanna have more pressure on one foot than the other, yet. For now, we wanna keep pressure. If you feel like you're getting out of control, it's most likely because you're doing one of two things. You're trying to look downhill, so it goes to the point of keep your eyes looking uphill. And if you are gonna look downhill, it's gonna be very brief, just with my head. Is it clear? Great, no one's there, I can go. Is it clear? Cool. Notice that I'm not turning my whole entire body. If I turn my whole body, it's gonna turn downhill. As I do this, you're gonna notice that my shoulders are not dipping down. I'm not reaching for the ground. My bum is not sticking out. I'm actually pressing my hips forward a little bit, allowing my knees to press forward, and my spine is in a nice neutral position. My eyes are up, I'm not staring at my feet. This right here is the better position to be in. Start to gain a little bit of speed. Gain a little bit of speed. Gain a little bit of speed. Then on three, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna progressively slow down. One, two, three. Notice how I stayed in control the whole time. I didn't just slam my brakes on. 
as I do this, I essentially want to keep my weight distributed evenly and I want to do this multiple times. I want to be in control. I want to be able to stop when I want to, go when I want to, stop when I want to, go when I want to, do that as many times as you can so that you know and build the trust of I can actually stop. Now, it might take quite a bit of time to actually get comfortable with this and that is part of snowboarding. It is a little bit challenging. So take your time, it's totally okay. Coolest thing about being in a beginner zone is we're all on the same page, right? It's pretty sick. So do that as many times as you need to. Now, once you're ready to step it up and you're ready for a challenge, what I want you to do is start to shift your weight to the right, shift your weight to the left, and allow you to start changing directions and doing the falling leaf on your toes as we did with our heels. Once you're feeling pretty awesome about both stopping on your heel side edge and your toe side edge, you're comfortable doing falling leaf, meaning changing directions. The next part of our journey is to point our board straight down the fall line. This whole time we've been across the fall line, we're actually gonna point our board down the fall line. Now anytime we point our board down the fall line, we're gonna pick up speed. The steeper the terrain, the faster we're gonna go. In this specific beginner hill, it's actually pretty flat. So I'm able to point my board down the fall line and then I wanna go back to a side slip. Remember that across the fall line and slow down. We're gonna definitively go straight down the fall line and then stop on my heels. Then I'm gonna point my board down the fall line, I'm gonna stop on my toes. And I'm gonna do that 10 times each if I need to. I wanna be so comfortable that I can point my board and stop. Now at first you might wanna to count to one, 1,000, two, 1,000 and stop. As you get more comfortable, count to three, 1,000, five, 1,000, seven, 1,000, as long as you can stop and using the counting system is a great way to manage your speed. Because if I count to 10, I'm going way faster than I would if I was counting to two. So when you're actually doing these turns, remember earlier we were talking about pushing our knee down and turning our knee. Uh, doing knee steering for both heel side and toe side, we're gonna implement the same tactic. I'm gonna point my board down the fall line. I'm gonna let my lead shoulder point in the direction I'm going, but I'm using my knee to get my board to turn across the fall line. With that said, it does require me to have about 65% of my weight on that lead foot. If you find this turn to be very delayed, long, and challenging, it's most likely because you have so much weight in the back foot because you're scared, nervous, and if that's the case, it's okay. Go back a step, get more confidence, and then attack this with more strong body positions. It's gonna help a lot. So what you're gonna see there is I did struggle a little bit as my board is across the fall line at the top of the turn. I kinda had to hop and get myself to go down the fall line. And then once I was going down the fall line, I had my weight even between both of my feet and I'm pointed straight down the hill. I waited a little bit of time, I counted in my head, and then I started turning my shoulder in the direction I'm going, using knee steering, but then I got back into a familiar area, which is that heel side slip to stop. Notice that I definitively point my board down, came to a stop. Then I pointed my board down and went to the other direction. Now it's up to you, you can just practice only doing toe side, toe side, toe side 10 times, then go on your heel side 10 times, totally okay. You could also go one, two, most likely you're gonna stick with one, unless you feel one super easy, then work on the one that's not as easy, but you definitely have an option there. So, we're next gonna actually start linking our turns. Ooh, pretty exciting. This is the gateway to snowboarding is your turns. We've talked about this law a couple times, and the law is you always gotta be leaning uphill. So this is extremely important when we start linking our turns. Now, there is a three-step process to linking our turns. First is we're leaning uphill on one edge. For the example we have here is I am leaning on my toe side edge. Then I'm gonna keep leaning on my toe side edge as I shift my weight and point my hip and my board down the fall line. Then I'm gonna even my weight out. I'm gonna go down for three seconds, five seconds, however long we want, and then I gotta turn on my heel side edge and I need to lean back uphill. Now the problem that a lot of you guys are gonna face is you become very impatient. You're gonna go step one, right to three, which means you go from one toe side edge right to your heel side edge and you're gonna crash, catch an edge, we've already seen it, it's not sick. So the goal is to go step one, Always point our board down the fall line, step two, then that gives you permission essentially to finish that turn and then you're just gonna do it again. Now, to really change it from just what we did last step to what we're doing now is being able to not stop in between. And if you realize how we did it earlier, I went J turn to my toes, point straight down low, J turn to my heels. That was essentially linking a turn without stopping. So essentially now we wanna do a very similar thing, except for I'm not gonna stop in between and I'm gonna to try to get some fluid turns in. 
One thing that's gonna really help when you're doing your S turns or linking your turns is think about your board is a knife and you're smearing peanut butter. As I'm making that turn, I really wanna feel my board smear the snow. I wanna look back and see that the snow has been smeared. That is gonna allow that board to go across the fall line smoothly. If I'm dumping an edge and getting high tilt and I make a slice in the snow, that makes things 10 times harder. So remember, smear the peanut butter. Literally, smear, smear, smear. Right, that was pretty cool because essentially I've already done that. I've already done the J turns where I point the board, slow down, point the board and go the other way. But the biggest difference is I just kept going nice and smooth. And then at the end there, I did show you an example of setting an edge, which means I'm gonna be more of a carve and we're not there yet. We'll learn about that in like five steps from like five levels from now. But what you're gonna see there is I also went from step one to three, caught an edge, fell over. Luckily I have a strong back and I'm able to not get wrecked, but well, step one, step two, step three. You're in the part of your journey now where you're gonna need some miles, which means you're gonna take a lot of laps. So what you can do is go ride the magic carpet, come back up and do a lap, do a lap. And with that said, I wanted to challenge you by doing as many turns as you can. Make some of the turns long and wide. Some are short and shallow. Try to change it up and understand how do I do the difference. I will be making a part two to this video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're gonna go through all the steps as to get you to be the awesome snowboarder, and it does start here. So if you're digging the content, give it a like, subscribe, share it with a friend because the more people know about this video, the more people we can get to snowboard, it's gonna help everyone. So with that said, good luck, have fun, vibe, enjoy snowboarding, enjoy the beautiful weather. So nothing but love. I'm out of here. See you dudes.